Hey guys, it's Tilly and today I am doing my top 10 bookish pet peeves video. I have a lot of pet peeves when it comes to books and there are so many that I can think of right now but I am only going to narrow it down to 10 and to make it even harder I'm going to narrow this down to two categories. So the first five will be physical peeves about books that I hate and the other one will be peeves that are involved in the book and characters and everything like that. So I'm going to get started because otherwise I'm going to ramble on and get so angry. So I think we can all agree with 10th place and that is stickers on books and I hate them so much because you pick up this book and you look at it and it's a beautiful cover that has been marred by a sticker and when you peel it off it never comes up the first time and it never comes off easy and leaves that stupid sticky residue and you just feel like curling into a ball and crying. But, 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 even worse than stickers on books, even worse, is fake stickers on books because they make it look like a sticker but can you get it off? Nope, it's stuck on there forever. So quick note to all publishers, if you're thinking of putting fake stickers on books, don't do it! We don't like it! Okay, this could have been a perfect cover that has been marred for life. It's just, come on guys. No one likes fake stickers. No one even likes stickers. If you guys know me on my blog, um, you will know that I dislike uneven books. Like, I don't really dislike them too much. I kind of, I can work with uneven books, but I have one series that is so uneven that every time I look at it, I feel like dying a little bit. That is my selection series. Roughly, you guys can see that these books are uneven, and why do they have to be so many different editions? I just, I just stick to one, please, for the sake of me the idiot who buys all different editions. Now I'm like looking at my shelves right now and I can see them, you've got the Fallen series where like, you know, the first few books are small but then the other ones are bigger and it's the same with like the Model Instrument series and I'm pretty sure you can buy them more even but, you know, I couldn't. At my bookstore they only had the uneven size ones and it just breaks me. Just make them all the same size. I think that a lot of us can also agree on this next one and that is cover changes because there is nothing worse than when you're midway through a series and all of a sudden you see the cover reveal for the next book and it is not the same as the others. Oh no, no, it could not be that easy to just continue on with the same style. No, that doesn't make sense. So they create a new style for the series and you just don't like it and it just ruins the aesthetic of the series. Straight away, the one that's coming to my mind is The Bone Season. Like, the first two books, I kind of like the editions they have released, okay? So why? Why, why, why? Have they changed the third one? Like, I'm very grateful for those publishers that do change the covers, but also leave the opportunity to buy the old ones. For example, The Winner's Kiss. They had new ideas for covers before the third book was released and so everyone was freaking out including me because I did not like the new editions and then the publishers said we will still be releasing the old editions and I just cried of happiness. But why would you change the covers midway through a series? I just, you know, it makes me not want to buy them at all. Just please stop changing them. And lastly, for the physical book problems that I'm having, my peeves, everything that I dislike, is the blurbs disappearing on the backs of books and being replaced with quotes or reviews that just, you know, I don't really care about. Like, for example, like you have The Loneliness of Distance Beings, which was just released, and I bought it because it was so damn beautiful, and I read about it, and it sounds great. But when I looked at the blurb, it's literally like this small quote, and it is a good quote. It is that quick, that strong, that beautiful, and it is also totally impossible. But it's like, what the damn hell is this book about from reading that? It could literally mean anything. So why is that supposed to convince me to want to pick up the book? It doesn't. I got it because I just luckily knew about it beforehand. But still, when I see other people's reviews on books, I'm kind of like, yeah, that's great. 
But they never put the full review on, they just kind of quote it, and then in my head there's like that little voice that's just like, did they take that out of context? Could that just be one good sentence about the book? What about the bad stuff about the book? Is there bad parts in that review? And my mind just does that, and I hate it so much. And now for inside the book, which in my opinion is much worse than any of the ones from beforehand. Because with physical things, you don't have to look at a book, you know? You can still enjoy the story inside. You can hide that behind all your other shelves, throw it in the bin, donate it to a library if you don't like the looks of it, or the size of it, or whatever. But it's the inside that really matters. So when the inside, the authors, they, they, so when the authors do these things, these peeves, I just cry a lot. I have to have tissues on hand just for when these peeves appear in books. So starting off, we have amnesia in books. So. I feel like as a reader, when I read Amnesia in a book, that it is kind of like a cop-out. Especially in fantasy and dystopia novels, because it's kind of like the author has dug this pit, this complicated storyline, with this character, and they've gone, how am I supposed to get out of this situation with everything being okay? I have an idea, let's give them amnesia, that way they can forget all the earlier problems and I get out of this situation great. Nope, it does not work for me, and especially when it's like, not resolved amnesia, like nobody, like they never get their memories back. And it just does my head in, because one of my favourite trilogies did it in one of their last books. And it actually wounds me that they did it, because to me it felt like it was the easiest way out of the situation that they had put their character in. And I just hate amnesia. I understand that sometimes you want to say like that this person would make the same decisions even if they did not know who they were or that this person became someone completely new because they lost their memories but just stop giving people amnesia. I don't like it. But then again some other people might like amnesia but for me it's like one of my pet peeves. Just no. I feel like this is one that not many people would have as a pet peeve, but I myself have it, and every time it occurs, I just like grit my teeth and ball my hands into fists, because I am so sick of seeing these male characters who are described as the bad boys, who do bad things and get away with it because they're sexy, but when it comes to a girl who does it, they're apparently the bad character and people judge them and it, I don't think it is fair at all. If that bad guy is gonna be like abusive because of his terrible, terrible past and his rockin' abs, then he's still abusive and he should not be romanticised in YA novels at all, but it happens to happen in like most of the books. But if a woman has a bad past, it's like, damn, she is an evil bitch, and we all need to hate on her. <gasps> this next one completely killed me, and I have read it in like a few books recently, and it does my head in, which is cheating in books. And like, I understand that, you know, it's a plot device, you know? This girl walks in and there's this hot, attractive guy that she falls in love with, and he has a girlfriend. Oh no, that means that I must hide my feelings for him. But what is this on a drunken night out? He kisses me and we're happy for like 45 minutes until he goes, oh no, what about my girlfriend? My opinion when it comes to being in a relationship is that if you start to have feelings for another person to the point where you want to kiss that person, you should not be in a relationship. You should dump your girlfriend, you should dump your boyfriend, whoever you are with, if you cannot commit to them. And in books, these characters don't seem to think about that. And I'm sorry, but a little bit of self-control when you're sitting in a car, soaked by the rain, or under the stars, um, you can not kiss them. Like, sure, maybe in the heat of the moment you guys get pretty close to each other, and then you go, I have a girlfriend, you know I have a girlfriend, so let's just stop this romanticise while I go and tell my girlfriend that it's over, and it'll all be great from there. But if you are writing a book and you think, this person who's in a relationship, I'm gonna make them cheat on their partner, I will literally just slam that book down and not be happy. I hate it. Cheating is just off the charts forever. Another one for me is unrealistic characters in books. 
This one, once again, is directed to fantasy and dystopia books. Um, because I understand that they need character development for those strong characters that have no emotions, that does what needs to be done, even if it is super inhumane. Um, and that, yeah, they do need to grow feelings. But they make some ridiculous choices in fantasy and dystopia books. To the point where I'm sitting there as a reader going, that character that you have written in these first 200 pages that you have described and like plotted out that we have gotten to know as readers would not act the way they do at the end. And when that happens, I just think this book has gone down like three stars for me. And my last bookish pet peeve is one that gets me super angry. And thankfully it is kind of disappearing a lot in the YA contemporary area but it is still there lingering. So basically, let's just picture this YA contemporary novel that is filled with white, straight people. And for the author to think that they can make this book diverse enough for everybody to read and enjoy, they have the token sidekick friend who is either in the LGBT plus community, who is a person of colour, or some giant nerd Asian person that they have to stereotype because for some reason most contemporaries where they only have this one diverse character fits into this stereotypical cookie cutout of this one person and I see it just regurgitated throughout so many books and it does my head in. Although I must say that that is not happening as often. There are more novels out there now like Aristotle and Dante and The Sidekicks and Unspeakable that have these diverse range of characters that we all need. But recently I read one of these contemporaries that was recently released and it was so painful and horrible to read and I hate it so much. So much. So there you guys have my top 10 bookish peeves. As you can tell, I get quite emotional and angry about so many of them because I just hate them and they just ruined the book for me for so many of those reasons. But I'm moving on, I'm moving on. I'm looking forward, I'm going ahead. So thank you guys for watching. I will be back with another video soon. I will be doing the Tea Yak unboxing probably this week and I'll be doing other stuff too, I guess. So I shall see you guys soon. Don't forget to say hi or check out my other social media, which I have all linked below. And until then, I hope that you guys are reading some really amazing books and that you're having a great week. I'll see you soon.